Welcome to the unit Humor. This unit helps to understand what humor is. This unit is classified into three reading sections. They are A. The snake and the mirror B. The duck and the kangaroo poem C. Little Bobby Welcome to the reading section, The Snake and the Mirror of the Unit Humor. Overview Let us have a look at the overview. The overview slide consists of three sections, namely Introduction, Instruction and Evaluation. The introduction section is meant to motivate the student to learn the lesson. The instruction section divides the contents of the lesson into four subsections. They are content, communication, constructive components and enrichment activities. The lesson is covered under content. All the activities pertaining to the four skills of language and their assessment are covered under the sections communication and the constructive components. The enrichment activities are meant to widen the scope of the student's thinking and learning, thereby making him or her a global citizen. The extent of understanding of the module can be assessed by the student under the evaluation section. Learning Objectives By the end of this section, you will be able to Explain the concept of humor Use linkers Identify and use phrasal verbs in daily conversation Prepare a poster for school annual day Let us start the section with a few questions. Observe the given image and answer the following questions. Have you ever heard of the story, The Lion Who Saw Himself in the Water? Which incident in the story felt humorous to you? What would you do if you were the lion? Have you ever seen your image in the water? How do you feel when you see your image in the water? Where did the lion find its image? What is the expression you observe in the lion's face? Click the correct answer. About the author The present story, The Snake and the Mirror, is written by Mr. Waikum Muhammad Bashir. Let us know more about him. Waikum Muhammad Bashir, 21st January 1908, to 5th July 1994 was a Malayalam fiction writer from the state of Kerala in India. He was a humanist, freedom fighter, novelist and a short story writer. He is noted for his down-to-earth style of writing that made him equally popular among literary critics as well as the common man. He is regarded as one of the most successful and outstanding writers from India. Translations of his works into other languages have won him worldwide acclaim. The story, The Snake and the Mirror, is an English translation of his story. His notable works include Balya Kala Sakshi, Sabdangal, Matilukal, and Anarganimisham. He was awarded the Padma Shri in 1982. He is fondly remembered as the Bepur Sultan. Let us now enter into the tale, The Snake and the Mirror. This story is the description of a doctor's experience when he encountered a snake. The doctor, who is a homeopath, asked his fellows, have you ever have a full-blooded cobra coiled itself 
around any part of your body. The doctor had such a dreadful, terrible experience once and started narrating his experience. Those were the days when I was practicing my medicine. It was a hot summer night about 10 o'clock. I returned to my room after having my meal in a restaurant. Suddenly, I heard some noise outside and opened the door to see what it was. There was nothing outside. As I had just started my medical practice and my earnings were meager, I stayed in a small rented room which was not even electrified. Looking at my room, one could say that the rats and I were sharing the room. I had only 60 rupees in my suitcase, apart from a few shirts and dhotis. Beside all these, I also possessed a solitary black coat. I took out the box of matches and lit the kerosene lamp on the table. I took off my black coat, shirt and not-so-white vest and hung them on the wall. The room had a tiled roof with long supporting gables that rested on the beam over the wall. The rats used to run frequently over the beams. I made my bed, pulled it close to the wall and lied on the bed. As I couldn't sleep, I went out to the veranda for some fresh air, but the air seemed to be on a time off. I returned to the room, sat on the chair in front of a mirror. I took out the book, the Materia Medica from the box beneath the table. I started reading the book at the table on which the lamp, a big mirror and a comb were present. I was very tempted to look into the mirror just like the others. I was a great admirer of beauty and always believed that I looked handsome those days. As I was a bachelor and a doctor, I made sure that my presence was felt. I picked up the comb, ran it through my hair and adjusted the patting so that it was straight and neat. I heard the sound again from above but didn't pay much attention to it. I looked at my face close in the mirror and made an important decision that I would shave daily and grow a thin moustache so as to look more handsome. With that decision, a smile bloomed on my face. Then I made another lovely decision that I would carry that lovely smile on my face forever to look more handsome. The same noise came from above again. I stood up, lit a beady and started walking up and down the room. All of a sudden, another lovely thought popped up in my mind. It was, I would get married to a woman doctor who had plenty of money and good medical practice. She must be fat. I applied a condition to the thought for a valid reason. If I made a silly mistake and had to run, she must not be thin enough to chase and catch me. With those thoughts in my mind, I came back to my chair which was in front of the mirror. There were no more noises from above. Suddenly, there came a dull thud-like sound as if a rubber tube fell on the ground. I was sure that there was nothing to worry about. Thought of turning around and taking a look at what fell from above. No sooner had I turned to take a look, I observed a fat snake wriggled over the back of the chair I was sitting on and landed on my shoulder. The landing of snake and I turned to take a look took place simultaneously. I neither jumped, trembled, nor cried out. I had no time to do any such things. The snake slithered along my shoulder and coiled around my left arm above the elbow. The widespread hood of the snake was not more than three or four inches from my face. I sat there holding my breath. In fact, I was turned to stone, but my mind was very active. The room I was sitting in was very dark except for the light of the kerosene lamp. Then I realized the presence of God, the creator of this world and this universe. God was there. Suppose I said something and he didn't like it. I silently thanked the God in my heart 
and imagine writing the words, O oh God, in bright letters outside my little heart. My left arm started to pain. It was like a thick leaden rod, no, a rod of molten fire, was slowly but powerfully crushing my arm. The strength of my arm was getting drained. What could I do? Any slightest movement of mine would result in the strike of the snake. I felt like death lurked four inches away from me. Then a question popped up in my mind. What medicine should I take if it bites me? Unfortunately, I did not have any medicines in the room. That moment, I thought myself that I was a poor, foolish and stupid doctor. I smiled feebly at myself, forgetting that my life was at stake. It seemed as if God appreciated that. The snake turned its head, looked into the mirror and saw its reflection. The snake was looking into the mirror. Though it was not the first snake that had looked into a mirror, but it was confirmed that the snake was looking into the mirror. I felt it was admiring its own beauty. Was it trying to make an important decision about growing a moustache or using eyeshadow and mascara or wearing a vermilion spot on its forehead? I didn't know anything for certain. What sex was the snake? Was it a male or female? I would never know, for the snake unwound itself from my arm, slowly slithered into my lap and then crept onto the table. Perhaps it wanted to enjoy its beauty from a closer view. I was turned into a man of flesh and blood from the granite image. Still, I stood silently holding my breath and quietly reached the veranda. From there, I leapt into the yard and ran for all I was worth. Everybody, listening to his story, heaved a sigh of relief. Then one of the persons asked, Doctor, is your wife fat? The doctor replied, No. The God had planned it otherwise. My wife is a thin, ready person blessed with the gift of a sprinter. Another person asked, Doctor, did the snake follow you? The doctor replied, I ran and ran till I reached my friend's house. I immediately smeared oil all over my body and took a bath. I changed into fresh clothes. The next morning, around 8.30, I went to my room along with my friend, along with a few others to pack my luggage and get shifted. Before we arrived there, some thief had removed almost all my belongings but the thief had left one last thing as an insult. Another person asked anxiously, What was that? The doctor said, My dirty vest, that fellow had such a sense of cleanliness, he could have washed it with soap and water and used it. There came out another question. Doctor, did you see the snake the next day? The doctor replied, I hadn't seen it from then. It was a snake taken with its own beauty. Glossary The meanings of certain words along with their usage in a sentence are shown. Click A man of flesh and blood. Admirer Full-blooded Gable Hood Hung. I was no image cut in granite. Lurk. Mascara. Meager. Molten. Parting. Ready. Slithered. Solitary. Sprinter. Taken with. Thud, tremble, vermilion, west, wriggled. Identify if the given statements convey that the doctor was afraid of the snake by clicking S or no. 
Click Submit to view the answers. Read the following sentences carefully. Drag and drop the word which suits the group of words given in the brackets and click the Submit button to verify the answers. Read the following sentences carefully and click the correct meaning of the highlighted words. In this section, we will learn about the sounds which imitate a noise or action. Read the following sentences and notice the highlighted words. Click the given icons to hear the sounds. These words imitate the sound it represents. Such words are called onomatopoeia words. Let us do an activity to understand different words that represent certain sounds. A few words are given below. Refer to a dictionary and know their meanings and write an example using the word. First one is given for you. Let us do an activity to understand onomatopoeia words better. A few images are given below. Drag and drop suitable onomatopoeia words into the fields provided and click the submit button. In this section, we will learn about linkers, choosing a linker and their use in descriptive paragraphs. Click each tab to know more. Linkers are the words that relate one idea or sentence of the text with another. They connect the ideas logically. A few linkers along with their type and purpose are listed below. Choosing a linker. There are two basic criteria to be focused in the selection of a proper linker. They are meaning and logical relation. Observe the following linkers. The logical relation expressed by the linkers so and because are different from the logical relations expressed by the linkers though although and but. The usage of linkers help in making the description clear without giving scope for any confusion. Example, I have prepared well, I got good marks in the exams. This example contains two different ideas but are not connected logically. When we modify it as, as I have prepared well, I got good marks in the exams. Both the ideas are getting connected logically. Here, as is playing a role of a linker. Let us do an activity to understand the linkers better. Read the following paragraph carefully and choose proper linker which suits the sentence. Let us do another activity to check your understanding. Drag proper linkers from the box below and drop them in the fields provided. Click Submit button to verify the answers. In this section, we will learn how to combine two sentences using past perfect 
and simple past. Observe the two sentences. Raju completed his work. Raju went to bed. Here, the sentences are talking about two different actions that are completed. To join these two sentences into one sentence, first observe the sequence. That is, which action is done first and which is done later. Then join them using proper linkers such as after, before, etc. In such cases, first action is written in past perfect, had plus verb 3. And the next action is written in simple past. From the example, Raju first completed his work and then he went to bed. So we can write complete sentence as Let us do a simple activity to check your understanding. Read the following sentences. Choose proper combined form of the sentences. In this section, we will learn about phrasal verbs. Observe the given two words, leave and behind. The word leave is a verb and it means to go away from. The word behind is a preposition and it means at or to the far side of something. For example, my grandfather has left behind 100 crores property. Such words which are formed by the combination of a verb and one or two particles or a preposition are called phrasal verbs. The meaning of a phrasal verb is different from the meanings of the individual words it is formed by. Let us look at another example. Let us see the different phrasal verbs that are made from the verb look and their meanings. The meaning of look up is to find the information in a book, on a map or a timetable. The meaning of look to is to rely on somebody or something. The meaning of look around is turn to look at something behind you. The meaning of lookout is to watch what is happening and be careful. Let us look at one more example. Now, let us see the different phrasal verbs that are made from the verb come and their meanings. Come across. The meaning of come across is to find something accidentally come up with. The meaning of come up with is to think of an idea or plan or invention. Come forward. The meaning of come forward is to offer help and information. Come out. The meaning of come out is to be released publicly. Let us look at one more example. Now, let us see the different phrasal verbs that are made from the verb read and their meanings. Read something back. The meaning of read something back is to read something again. Read over. The meaning of read over is to read something quickly from the beginning to the end. Read off. The meaning of read off is to read a list aloud. Read out. The meaning of read out is to read aloud. Let us do an activity to check your understanding. Drag and drop proper phrasal verbs from the box below into the fields provided in the sentences. You must have seen different posters in magazines, newspapers and roadside posters. Posters are used to pass a particular message to a target group effectively. For example, movie poster, informative health poster, contest poster. For example, the movie posters give the following details. Movie title, date of release, star cast.
the health posters give the following details. Theme Information The contest posters give the following details. Contest name Theme Prizes Sponsors Here is a poster by the Bombay Circus. Observe the poster and answer the following questions. Take up the following activity. You are conducting musical night on December 31st of 2014 and you want to publicize it. See the reference poster and prepare a poster for your program which includes the following information. Date of commencement, entry cost per head, programs list, arrangements for the audience, special guests. Read the following story and give a suitable title to it. Listen to the following story, The Frogs and the Well, attentively and answered the questions followed. A group of frogs was traveling through the woods and two of them fell into a deep pit. All the other frogs gathered around the pit. When they saw how deep the pit was, they told the two frogs that they were as good as dead. The two frogs ignored the comments and tried to jump out of the pit with all of their might. The other frogs kept telling them to stop that they were as good as dead. Finally, one of the frogs took heed to what the other frogs were saying and gave up. He fell down and died. The other frog continued to jump as hard as he could. Once again, the crowd of frogs yelled at him to stop the pain and just die. He jumped even harder and finally made it out. When he got out, the other frog said, Did you not hear us? The frog explained to them that he was deaf. He thought they were encouraging him to the entire time. A few statements from the story, The Frogs and the Well are given below. Click either true or false. Let us now listen to a few famous quotes. Life is a progress and not a station by Ralph Waldo Emerson. When it is obvious that the goals cannot be reached, don't adjust the goals. Adjust the action steps by Confucius. Summary Let us recap the highlights of this section. The story the Snake and the Mirror is a humorous fiction story written by Vaikum Muhammad Bashir in Malayalam and translated into English by V. Abdullah. It describes how an unmarried doctor saved himself from a dangerous snake which coiled around his arm. On a hot summer night about 10 o'clock, the doctor had his meal in a restaurant and returned to his small rented and unelectrified room. He made his bed, pulled it close to the wall and lied on the bed. As he couldn't sleep, he went out to the veranda for some fresh air, but the air seemed to be on a time off. He returned to the room and started reading a book. He found a comb on the table and got tempted to look into the mirror just like the others. Suddenly, he heard a thud-like sound as if a rubber tire has fallen from above. To his surprise, he came to know that it was not a rubber tire, but a full-blooded snake. He didn't move even a bit. He turned to stone. The snake coiled around his arm. After some time, the snake saw its reflection and was taken by its own beauty. For some unknown reason, the snake uncoiled the doctor and went closer to the mirror. The doctor made use of the chance and escaped from that place. The next day, he came to his room along with his friends and was shocked to see the room almost empty. He came to know that some thief has stolen all his belongings. 
but the thief insulted the doctor by leaving the doctor's dirty vest there on the wall. Follow up work. Take up the following activities. Prepare a poster for your school annual day with the details like day, programs, chief guests, etc. Take an English newspaper, read the news and underline the words which you feel difficult to understand and look up their meaning in the dictionary. Read all the lessons in the textbook. Identify the phrasal verbs and note them down. Find their meaning in a dictionary and use them in your daily conversations with your friends. Check your understanding of the lesson by taking up the mock unit test. Enrichment Activities Watch the beautiful promise song from the following link. Try to learn more about Mr. Bean. Situational Conversation The section Situational Conversation is meant to improve the communication skills of the students. In this section, we will observe how to speak about directions in English. Sometimes, we may come across the situations where we need to talk about directions. In this session, a boy is trying to direct a man to his friend's house. In the map, the box in green is the destination. Excuse me, young man. Yes, uncle. I need a small help. Sure. How can I help you? You seem to be aware of this locality. I'm looking for my friend's address. Oh, sure. May I know your friend's name and other details so that I can help you? He is Mr. Venu, a retired school teacher. Hmm, Mr. Venu? Are you talking about the one who has two children, Tarun and Varun? Exactly, my boy. Can you guide me how to reach his house? Why not, uncle? Go straight first. You will find a theater on right side. Take the adjacent lane. After a distance, you will find Friends Park and a lane opposite to that. Walk through the lane. You can see a KFC store on the right side of the way. There is a lane beside the store. In the same lane, Fourth house on the left side is Mr. Venu's house. You can also see two big coconut trees outside the compound. Thank you, my boy. Very nice of you. It's my pleasure, uncle. You have successfully completed the section, The Snake and the Mirror.